So in this video, we will learn about the um, hypothesis test for a population proportion 10.2 in the packets or this section is 8.3 in your textbook. So this chapter is very similar to chapter 7. So the first is we will learn about the population proportion and then population mean and the last one is standard deviation or the variance so three things only so we also repeat them in this chapter but using the hypothesis, hypothesis test so the first objective for this section is explain the logic of hypothesis, hypothesis test a researcher obtains a random sample of thousands Americans and find that 534 are in favor of banning the cell phone use while driving. So we have the proportion or the probability of 534 over 1000, which is 53.4%. Now, does this suggest that more than 50% of people favor the policy? Or is it just impos possible that the two proportion is 0.5 and we just happen to survey the majority of the, the people that's, that's in favor of the policy. In order to know which one is true, we are using the hypothesis testing that allows us to see whether it would be um, unusual to obtain a sample proportion of 0.534 or higher from a population holds the proportion is 0.5. Now, it also help us to decide whether the data is convincing or statistic, uh, statistically significant uh, or it is evident that we should have. So basically, we are using the hypothesis testing to see if whatever we have is unusual or not. Okay. Statis uh, statistically significant is another word. Significant. So this one is when observed results are unusual. So that unusual meaning that the the data or the results are not convincing. So under the assumption that the no hypothesis is true, right? So we we have some data. We have some existing uh, value of the no hypothesis. Now we use the hypothesis testing and we see that it is unusual that the no hypothesis is true, which, which is it should be false. Then we can reject the no hypothesis because it's unusual, so we should reject them. So if it's statistically significant, then we should reject the no hypothesis. And there are a few ways to test for the hypothesis, but the one that we will learn in this class is using the p value approach. That means we reject the no hypothesis under the assumption that the no hypothesis is true. Um, and the probability, the probability of getting a sample proportion at a stream or more as the one obtained is very, very small. So we should reject it. Okay, let's go over the p-value approach. We have the same data, the same example. So we have the proportion of 53.4%. Now we can compute the probability of obtaining a sample proportion of 0 0.34 or, or higher from a population whose for proportion is 0 0.5, just as we did in the previous chapter. Now remember, the probability is simply the area 
so the area under the curve is the probability so we can use the the, the normal CDF function in your TI 83 84 uh, to, to find the value now so we are trying to look for the probability of getting 53.4 or higher right so we are trying to prove that so first is you are trying to find the area under the curve so we want the proportion of 53% uh, point three or zero point or higher than zero point five three four and we are given that's the no hypothesis that means P naught or this is the proportion the mean is zero point five and we have the formula using the the Z score so the z score or the area under cu the curve is uh, we take the value that we are looking for or 0 0.534 minus the mean or the, the no hypothesis 0 0.5 and over uh, the sigma p this one we have to compute and this just follow the formula of what p minus p naught over sigma of p and how do I compute sigma of p si from chapter 7 sigma of p is equal to the proportion 1 minus proportion over n and the proportion is we are given 0 0.534 for our example and then 1 minus that the data here uh, is a thousand because we have a thousand American and right and if we do that uh, calculation here you should get 2.13 and because we are looking for the value of, of higher or bigger than that that means we get some value um, of 2.13 and you want the higher of that or all the way to the right right all the way to the right to find the area all the way to the right going infinitely to the right side then we can use the the normal CDF function to find that value so plug this into your uh, TI 83 or 84 the first one is you go from this value and you want higher than that and then we should have some very big value all the way to the right and I choose that's maybe 10 to the power of 99 and I should guess this is just some value is very huge all the way to the right and you got 0 0.0166 uh, and this should be your sigma of, of that p proportion and I plug this in here I guess um, the sigma of this to be 0 0.0166 and this whole thing divided by 0 0.0166 uh, that should p uh, two point. Oh, sorry, I make a, uh, a typo here. The value here is two point one three, which is the same thing as you are using. No, sorry. Uh, we happen to have this value equal to two point one three. The same thing to. Uh, our sigma p, yeah. So this is the value. They are similar, but they are not the same value. Yeah. So be careful. I make a mistake here. So you do the calculation, and it's happened to be very close value to the sigma p. They are similar, but they are not the same meaning. Okay. So because the value of the area we found is called the the p value. 
and which is the probability of a randomly selected sample like we have and that would result in a proportion of 0 0.534 or, or more that is the probability of getting the proportion of bigger than this value is 0 0.0166 or here right the sigma p or about this is about 2% or two sample in a and 100 will give a sample proportion as high or higher than the one we obtain if the proportion is really 0 0.5 because the p-value is very low right 0. Uh, 0 0.0166 here this one is very very low then we can say that the results was unusual and we can uh, reject the null hypothesis in this case okay so let's try another example so remember from chapter 7 the best point estimate of the proportion um, is given by the p equal x over n and the requires uh, requirements that we have to check before we can use the p-value methods that we discussed above uh, make sure that the sample is simple random okay or n p naught one minus p naught is bigger than ten, and the samples are independent of each other. And usually, this value, I mean, these requirements um, are met in this class. So this is the procedure. We have a few steps for conducting a hypothesis test about a proportion using the p-value technique. First. You have to determine the nodes in the alternative hypothesis. And they can have three ways two tails, left tails, or the right tails. Now, the next one is you have to select a level of significance or alpha. And this alpha is based on the seriousness of making a type 1 error. And usually, this alpha is given from the problem. The next one is you have to compute the test statistic Z0 or Z0 and this one is the value that we compute earlier in this, uh, in this example right Z here so Z0 is P minus P0 this is a no hypothesis and P0 1 minus P over N take the square root and then phi after you have the Z uh, statistic I mean that the test statistic you can find a corresponding p-value using again using the normal CDF as we did above earlier and you must draw the curve in order not to make uh, a mistake so two tails you take twice the value of, of that because we take the, the two area of so just take one area and multiply by two and less than or the left tail or bigger than or the right tail and then states the conclusion if the p-value is less than the alpha or, or the level of significant then we reject if it's less than that means it's very small or unusual we re reject if it's bigger than the level of significant or alpha the p-value then we do not reject so remember this rule so let's go over this uh, testing a uh, hypothesis of uh, population proportion and in this case we are given a very large sample size so let's do this very um, detail in 1997 there are 60, I mean, 46 percent of Americans said that they did not trust the media 
when it comes to reporting the news fully, accurately, and fairly. In uh, 2007 poll of 1,010 of those nationwide, 525 said that they did not trust and they have the level of significance 0 0.05. Now, the question is, is there enough evidence to support the claim that the percentage of Americans that do not trust has increased from this year that we first measure um, the reports? So this means the no hypothesis is the one that we uh, we claim or we had originally. Forty forty six percent is the one that we had in the beginning. Or this is the no hypothesis, P naught. Okay. Now we have this number of sample data, or this is the number of n, and this one is just the x. That the number of people states that they did not just, and the, the question is, if that data increase from this year, increase that means the right and tail, right? So first, this is given uh, from a simple random symbol yes, and we can do the calculation n, which is what ten ten p naught. 0.46 1 minus p naught which is 1.0.46 and this happened to be 251 and this is bigger than 10 so this is a normal distribution to yes too since the the sample size is is 5 is less than 5% of the population size uh, yes because this is a level significant only it's less than five, uh, uh, less than five percent. So the the assumption of independent is met, right? Uh, the whole um, population of American should be a couple hundred million, and we only have like a thousand. So the 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 sample is very uh, small, less than five percent. So it, it should be independent from the. Yeah, the uh, the population. Usually, these conditions uh, are good for 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 our class. But I just do the check so that you can see. So we do the setup here. So the no hypothesis is the proportion is zero point forty six, right, from the original one. Now, the alternative is that we claim. That is it increased. That it is it bigger than zero point forty six, right? Can increase. The level of significance is zero point zero five, right? This is alpha. And the next thing is we just have to compute the the test statistic or Z naught, and Z naught the formula is P. Minus p naught and p naught multiply one minus p naught over n square root. Okay. So how do I compute the p hat? P hat is a point estimate from chapter seven, or x over n, and x is the one that um, reject or this not just the media, which is five twenty five over a thousand and ten. So 525 over 1010, and that gives you 0 0.5198. And you can compute the test statistic, just plug in all the number. So 0 0.5198 minus P0 is here, 0. Point, the null hypothesis is 0 0.46 over square root. A uh, peanut zero point forty six and one minus zero point forty six over n or ten ten and that should be three point eighty one. After we compute the test statistic, you can find a p value using the normal CDF and make sure to draw the curve. 
so you have uh, the curve like this right so p naught is about 0 0.46 this is p naught and you have this the test statistic um, to be 3.81 and and your proportion p is 0 0.5198 right so 0 point uh, 0 0.5198 corresponding to the test statistic of 3.81 and the ori original one corresponding to 0 right now you want all the region uh, from this point and above because this is this this problem is is, is increasing or the right and tail so we go from the test statistic, the value here, and above, all the way to the right. So if, if you are looking for um, the probability of the, the proportion bigger than 0 0.518, no, 98, we can use the normal CDF function. So we go from here. 0. Point, I mean 3.81 using the test statistic 3.81 and then all the way to the right or very last value again I use 10 to the 99 uh, and this one is called a Z0 value okay 3.81 and this give me around 0. 0. 0.000695 and because the p-value is very small less than 0 0.05 the significant level right so if it's less than we reject the null hypothesis so you can conclude that we reject the null hypothesis or there is ins uh, sufficient data that's uh, um, the percentage of American that do not just the media uh, has increased. That's mean the claim from that uh, the claim from the report, the new report of this year is correct. Okay, because we we have the p-value very small, so that means we we reject the origi original data and we agree with the new evident well right, let's try the um, the next example so this one is also best about the population proportion but with a, a small sample size the last one is with the, the large sample size but this one is a small one so for the sampling distribution of the the proportion to be approximately normal, we require this condition. However, what if this condition is not met? We use something called the binomial uh, dis distribution. So we use the binomial distribution rather than the normal distribution. So to compute the p value using the binomial uh, binomial distribution, remember for the right tail test, the p value is just the probability of obtaining x or more successes, and the left tail is is the probability of getting of getting x or less successes. Okay, or here p of x bigger than or equal to some number and here p is less than or equal to some number so now let's try this uh, hypothesis test of uh, population proportion in 2006 10.5% of all the live birth in the United States was to um, 
the mother under 20 years of age. Now, a sociologist claimed that this percentage is decreasing. Decreasing, which is a left and tail. And this percentage claim here originally is the peanut or the no hypothesis. Now, she conducts a simple random sample of 34. So 34 is the end. And find that three of them was more or less than 20 years of age. So they find something which is X and 20 years of age less than, right? They give us the level of significant alpha. So first, we know that it's a simple random sample from, from the given here, the statement. And N is 34. P0 is 0 0.105 from here and then multiply 1 minus that you get 3.195 and this is less than 10 right in the last example we we have this to be bigger than 10 so we are good but here we are less than 10 so we have to use the binomial make sure you know that binomial okay and uh, this one again it also met because of the significant level is 0 0.01 and we we have the uh, the sample size to be independent uh, from the population size because this one is less than 10 we cannot assume the same the sampling distribution of, of B has is approximately normal. Instead, we must yield the binomial distribution. Less than ten, you have to yield the binomial distribution. Now let's try to solve this problem. So. Uh, uh, the null hypothesis is 0 0.105 this is just uh, summarize uh, and we suggest that is decreased right decreasing so it's less than this value level significant is 0 0.01 given above And now, let x represent the number of the live birth in the United States to the model under the 20 years of age. We have x to be 3 successes because we are given here 3 of them. Okay. And we have total of 34 trials. You want to find the p-value. Decreasing that means x less than or equal to 3, right? And assuming the proportion is 0 0.105 or the probability of 0 0.105. So on your cal calculator, you have to use the binomial distribution, not the normal one. So it should be binomial m cdf instead of normal okay so we want p x less than or equal to 3 so this is binomial m cdf and 34 this is just a syntax p naught or the null hypothesis 0 0.105 and x is 3 and this is around 0.515 this is the p-value now your p-value is bigger than the um, level significant right 0 0.515 bigger than 0 significant which is alpha bigger than that means we we do not reject or we can make the conclusion uh, there is 
if we do not reject that means there is insufficient data evidence to conclude that the percentage of a live birth in the US to mothers under the 20 years of age has decreased so we do not reject the no hypothesis and the next case it just um, um, a summary of how you can use this on the TI-83 and R-84 and that is the end of this section 8.3